task at hand, swap out this valve. He wasn't concerned that it's polished brass. We're gonna use what we have in stock, which is chrome. Yeah, this is brass craft. Thought for a second it might have been something else, but it says brass craft right there. We're getting rid of these. All of them are leaking right out of the stem. And it's non-serviceable. I guess a little bit of commentary is in order. As you can see, I'm taking off the outer sleeve and the brass. I'm sorry, the copper tubing as well. And I'm getting out of my M12 copper tubing cutter, which I thoroughly enjoy using. Model number 2471 for those of you curious. And I need to get this back to the wall closer. So I don't have so much copper sticking out. Clean it up, of course. And uh, make sure to deburr it. Now the idea behind getting this so close to the wall, like I said, I don't have so much copper sticking out. There's tools to pull the compression nut back off if you ever need to in the future, okay? So I'm not really worried about that. And uh, basically get it back to the wall. So that's just my just my thing. It's all it is. Grease it up with some slick and slide or waterproof silicone lube, whatever you can find, just to reduce the friction. That's all it's for. There's no sealing involved with this lube, as far as I know. It's just to reduce the friction, make it a lot easier for this nut to go on with that Pasco angle on wrench, model number 4525. I can't recommend that thing enough. The one on the right, tightening the nut, is the rigid one-stop wrench. It actually comes with two wrenches, one for the 3 8 nut on your water supply, and this is you see right now tightening, tightening the nut. Model number 27023 for that one. I'm putting on a flex braided connector. Um, I'm Towards the end of the video, I'll actually explain why that is. The reason I have to make one pass here with uh, my copper tubing cutter, my mini one here, I have to hold the stem from turning with my Knipex, as you can see. So I cut the outer sleeve, I cut the inner, the copper itself, pull it off, and then I use my copper tubing cutter, the M12, to get it closer to the floor. This is on a vertical piece, so deburring the copper after you've cut is a little bit different. You wouldn't have to, technically, it's not really using a lot of water, you don't have a whole lot of flow going by, but I just felt a little bit particular, and in a little bit you'll see me deburring. Of course, on a vertical piece of pipe coming up to the floor, be careful to get all shavings, or if you don't, you can flush it out before you hook it up to the toilet. Put your lovely chroma scutcheon on. Take it home from there. Pretty self-explanatory when you get the first one down. This is going to be a little bit different because it is a straight stop and not an angle. I always like to take the handle off. Uh, this was actually before I got a tool specific for this water stop. But uh, that's a different story. And of course, use a smooth jawed wrench. And in this case, I love my uh, Knipex pliers wrench. So you're not going to scar up the surface of the chrome. Put the handle back on and go about your business. Here is the second wrench I was talking about that comes with the rigid 27023. It uh, tightens up that 3 8 nut and you're good to go. Really nice. First time ever seeing a designer toilet came from Paris, according to the label here. Jacob Delafon, I have no idea. Anyways, um, before I go any further, I want to kind of explain what's going on with my videos, and I've been trying to get task specific, like I said. And I want to produce them that way from now on, make them a little bit shorter, and more to the point. I'm going to be re uploading current videos, or sorry, previous videos into these shorter segments to focus on a new direction I, will, I want to take this channel. So thanks for bearing with me. I'm glad for all your feedback, of course. Don't let this fool you. It is uh, quite a comfortable position as long as the toilet is not all nasty in the back or really the whole thing.
this particular toilet, we have to replace the flush handle. As you can see, no worky worky. Oh, great. <laughs> this is a corky. Corky, right there. This is actually metal. I'm impressed. It's spring loaded? Wow. So it seems like just these valves with these quarter turn stems here are the ones that are leaking on all the toilets. So that's why I haven't touched any underneath the sinks. Because they're not this style and they seem to be just fine. If you were wondering why I'm not doing all of them in the house including underneath the sinks, something with this design just isn't sealing anymore. But it's been about 20-25 years so what do you expect? Anybody question why I was using these flexible ones versus the solid? You know, the plated ones like these. Well, honestly, call, call me a little nervous or paranoid, but look at the only ones I've ever seen have the plastic ends to them. But we have stainless stainless nuts on either end. Obviously, you could have it in 3 eighths, but for the 7 eighths end that goes under the side of the toilet, a lot of the cheap ones have plastic. These are some beefy stainless ones and yeah I've never seen them but with plastic you know so there's ones out there with um, stainless nuts on the end I actually might use those instead but I can count on these and also we don't stock these anymore so thus ends our adventure for this Wednesday, March 22nd. Till next time, thanks for joining in. Take care, and I'll see you later.